most plants that you can grow. Aloe vera is probably the most useful and easiest to grow. And not only that, it produces a heck of a lot of babies called pups. And you can see this aloe vera plant of mine, it has one main parent plant and it has lots of other baby plants around it too. And I've got quite a few of them. Now, what I need to do is divide all of the babies off of the main parent plant because we have our annual seed swap coming up here very soon. So that's an event where gardeners from all over the Isle of Man come together and for free we trade and, and swap seeds and plants with one another. And I know that I won't need all of these aloe vera plants, so I'm going to take all of my spares to the event. Now, to divide all of the babies off of the parent plant, it takes about two days. It could take between two and six days, depending on how long you want to push off the next step. So the first part is actually dividing all of the babies off. Then you have to let the little babies sit overnight and the parent plant sit overnight at least 24 hours for the uh, calluses to form on the cut parts. And then you can plant it back up again. So I actually have some that I've already divided. These are ready to be planted. So these are baby aloe vera plants. This is the parent plant that I took these off of. And I'm going to repot the mother plant as well into a quite large pot. Now, aloe vera, they don't really need very nutrient-dense compost or potting mix, but they do benefit from being potted on into a new pot with new compost once a year. Um, barring that, you can also give them a feed in spring and in autumn as well, just a very light feed because they really don't need too much in the way of nutrients. You could kill them with kindness with too much water or too much uh, feed, etc. So we're going to get started with the first step. And that first step involves taking the babies out of the plant or out of the potted plant and cutting them with a knife. So just to separate them from the, the main parent plant and to make sure that there's some roots still available on each one of the babies. So it has quite a substantial root ball on this and it could be a bit daunting to think about dividing it. But oftentimes these little babies will come right off the parent plant just with a gentle tug. And so let's, let's see if we can pull some of these off. So notice that also the, the compost is really gritty. So I use just a, a general purpose, an all purpose, multi-purpose compost mixed together with grits. But you can use cactus compost and um, you can also mix perlite into your compost as well. What they don't like are wet feet. Now these are moist because I've just watered them just to help this process, but the wetter the feet, the more likely that you'll end up killing your aloe vera with kindness. Teasing with your fingers helps and removing as much of the compost as possible will help you to better see the plants and the roots and where they all connect. Well, this one seems really solid, solidly stuck together. So I think cutting is going to be necessary. A chopping board and a small knife will really help you to separate the baby plants from the parent now. Um, this can be a quite scary step and it's perfectly fine to cut into the roots. And also you're going to lose some roots too, most likely in this scenario. And that's a given. Don't worry about that. You just need to make sure that each of the babies has a good inch or two of at least two or three roots coming off of it and also that the parent plant has a good root ball still intact as well. So this first baby is now off. You can see where I've cut just here. 
and it's got some really good roots on it. I'm going to brush some of them aside and then I'm going to set this aside to dry out. So that part where I cut, it's important that it's given a bit of time to heal over, to form a callus before you plant it back into a potting mix. And this is the same when you propagate other succulents as well. So whether it's hen and chicks or any other succulent, if you take a cutting, you need to let it kind of heal over before you put it back into the, into the potting mix. If you do plant it before then, there is a chance it'll still grow, but the chance is much higher if you let it heal a bit. So now, it's a little bit easier, so once you've taken that first plant off, you can go around the edge and it's much easier to remove all the other babies. So there's another plant and these will happily grow on into plants as big as the parent and bigger and they're just filled with that lovely aloe juice that's so good in helping to treat minor cuts and burns and also in skin care which is what I use aloe for a lot of the times. So this little tiny baby one, it has some roots coming off of it too. It's not as good as the other ones but I think this one will take. That one has a really, see, look, roots. It's a shame. It's a shame that uh, these aren't connected to a plant, but there's always casualties in this process. But this plant has really good roots coming off of it. That one will definitely take. And now we're just left with the parent plant, which has still some really good roots coming off of it and it will recover and it will go on to produce many, many more pups. So these plants, I'm just gonna set aside for now because they can't, be po they can't be potted on for another day. So they're gonna be going over here and we've got the main parent plant and we've got one, two, three. We've got six baby plants that came off of this. So six little babies that will be going to new homes at the seed swap in March. The spent compost that was in the pot beforehand, you shouldn't use it to repot up any plants that are going to be in the house, but what you can do is add it to your compost pile or use it as a mulch outside. So now that I've cleared this little work area, I'm going to repot up a couple of the babies and the parent plants from yesterday. So these guys are ready to go in the soil and they just need smaller pots about this size. Parent plant obviously will need a larger pot and all I've done as far as the potting mixture is mix some a bit more loamy uh, compost with very fine gravel and this is to help aid uh, drainage and to make sure that those aloe vera roots don't get too soggy. Now, as I said before, you can use a cactus uh, potting compost, you can mix uh, multi-purpose compost with perlite and that will help to create drainage as well. This is just easy for me because it's what I have on hand, but occasionally I will have perlite as well and I'll use that too. So just scoop it up, make a little divot. And this little guy is gonna sit inside that hole and I'm not going to plant him any deeper than where just just above where the roots start to form so just above there so carefully tuck his roots or her roots I'm not sure actually which gender do they have genders I have no idea they're asexual they have their own babies they're both So just tuck that inside there and set it aside. I'm going to top dress these also with some more of that fine gravel 
once I get them all potted up. So there's one. I'm putting the mother plant right back into the pot that she came out of. You can tell from looking at the leaves of this plant that she's been used quite a bit. So generally what I do with aloe vera leaves is I cut them off and I peel them and use all of what's inside. So too often I think people who use aloe vera, they'll snip off an end and then just use the very end to treat a little burn or a cut or insect bites. And that wastes so much of the aloe vera that's inside. It's far better to, to peel it and you can refrigerate it as well. So aloe vera gel will last a good week in the fridge at least. The last thing that I'm going to do is just, well, almost last thing, is just a top the top of the soil off with some of this fine gravel. And this is alpine gravel for planting up alpines. And I use it a lot for various reasons in the garden. But you can use horticultural grit as well. And what this does is, in, in cases where you've got plants that are outside, it'll help stop weeds from getting into your, into your containers. It looks really nice. And then for house plants, I find that it's better to have a top dressing because when you water it, the soil won't, won't erode away from the plant too much. In my zone, in my climate, aloes can go outside in the summertime, but at win in the winter time, they need to come inside. But other, other than that, they're, they're pretty hardy. They're pretty hardy. They can take a little bit of neglect and they're a really great house plant. So if you have one yourself and it has all these pups growing off of it and you don't know what to do, now you do. So thanks so much for watching. If you've got any more questions, I have a blog post also outlining the entire process. It might be easier for some people to have a look at that as well. And um, yes, if you, get, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and also subscribe to Lovely Greens. I put out quite a few gardening videos and allotment tours and I have honeybees as well. So thanks again and I will see you next week.